everybody, and welcome to the first installment of Fidelis Fun Features, where we showcase some of the more advanced capabilities of Abacus in a more fun and interesting way. Today, Dr. Rob Hurlston, co-founder and chief engineer of Fidelis, will be taking a smoothed particle hydrodynamics, or SPH, approach to virtually pour himself a beer, or pop, into a red solo cup in celebration of tailgating season and the resurrection of the Big Ten Championship. We hope you enjoy. Hi guys. So just a bit of background first. Uh, smooth particle hydrodynamics is an FEA methodology that allows us to take a Lagrangian approach to highly dynamic modeling of liquids and even solids. In layman's terms, what that means is that particles are actually moving and interacting with each other throughout the analysis, rather than flowing through cells as they do in typical Eulerian methods. Okay, so to get started, we're gonna to need to make our components. And first of all, we're gonna start with the bottle. And so that's gonna be a discrete rigid shell that we're gonna revolve 360 degrees. And so what we're gonna try and do is build something that looks somewhat like a beer bottle. And so based on my experience of beer, a bottle is around sort of 50 millimeters in diameter. And it ends up extending up to around between 150 and 200 uh, millimeters in height, something like this. And uh, we can revolve about the central axis and create ourselves a beer bottle. Secondly, we're gonna make a cup and we're gonna make that in much the same way. So we're gonna start from zero and go to about 30 millimeters in radius this time and around 100 millimeters high. And again, we're gonna revolve 360 degrees. And so now we've got a cup. And then finally, we need to make the beer, which in this case is gonna be a deformable solid revolution. And call this one beer. Continue. And we need the beer to be the same size uh, in diameter as the bottle. So 25 millimeters. And we're gonna say it's about let's say it's 75 millimeters deep in this bottle. Someone maybe, maybe already took a sneaky drink out of it. And so now we've got our parts, we need to build properties. And actually the only property we need in this analysis is for the beer since the other two parts are gonna be rigid parts. So the density of essentially water is gonna be 9.4 E minus 10. And then we're going to need viscosity, which again, we're going to use the viscosity of water, 1 E minus 9. And finally, we're going to use the equations of state, and we're going to say USUP, which is basically us defining the way the particles interact. And this is taken from a uh, so example of water uh, in, a, in a sloshing uh, scenario. So 1.45 E to the 6 and then zero and zero and we have our material now we're going to need to make a section for this it's going to be a solid section called beer and it's going to use a material beer and then finally we apply the material to uh, the component and now we are in a position where we've built our parts and are ready to go so to assemble the parts we go into the assembly module and we bring all of them in individually as so, and then we're gonna want to move them apart. So they come in kind of all together. So we're gonna wanna move these apart. We're gonna move the beer and the bottle separately. So let's see. I'm gonna twist that about the Z axis and we're gonna do 70 degree rotation. So that's ready to be poured at this point. Okay, and then we're gonna need to move the bottle a little bit further away. So we're gonna select both the bottle and the beer. We're gonna move it, uh, let's see, 40 millimeters in the X direction and 20 millimeters in the Y direction. Oops. So 40 and 20, and there we go. We've got a reasonable initial position now for our parts. In terms of steps, we need to apply a dynamic explicit step to run a smooth particle hydrodynamic analysis. And we're gonna switch mass scaling off in this case. And we're gonna run for two seconds. 
should be enough to pour some beer into the cup. Now before I do anything else, I do like to mesh the parts typically. Uh, that helps with some of the interactions that we're going to do later. So to make the beer a little bit nicer of a mesh, we're actually just going to cut it into quarters. So we're going to use this partitioning strategy here. And we're going to split again. So we've got four quarters and hopefully we'll get a green mesh. There we go. And so this time we want to use about a three millimeter mesh. We're aiming for about 10,000 elements and it's going to give us six and a half thousand. That'll be good enough. One thing we want to make sure of in this analysis is that we're using explicit elements and that we allow conversion to particles with a threshold of zero. Now I'm going to go ahead and mesh the other two components. Again, I think we will um, probably just give the mesh some help in terms of splitting this up. So we'll just split these surfaces and it'll give us a slightly more attractive mesh. The cup, I don't think we'll need any help. So there we go. Now the, the mesh, mesh of the cup and the bottle can be quite large and coarse since these are rigid parts. So now we've got our mesh, we can go ahead and uh, apply some interactions to this model. Uh, firstly, we're going to create a uh, interaction property for contact. And what we want to do here is just leave this blank, which will give us the default uh, settings for Abacus, which is fine in this case. We're then going to apply contact and we're going to use a feature called general contact, which is a really powerful feature of Abacus and essentially allows the solver to automatically find the contacts and apply them dynamically during the analysis. We'll use the properties that we've just defined and now we have um, contact properties defined within the model. Because we have some rigid parts here, we do need to constrain them and so we're going to apply some reference points here and then we're going to make some rigid body constraints and now what we need to do is select the components that we're interested in and then go ahead and select the reference point that will control those so I'll do that again for the beer so we're going to select the body of the beer bottle and make sure I get all of these so that looks good. OK, and then we're going to say the control point for that is this one. And so now we've got control points for both of our rigid bodies. And I think we're ready to move on to the loading. So to load this part, well, first of all, we're going to want to apply some gravity so that the liquid can fall into the cup. So we take gravity load. We're going to say minus 9800 millimeters per second squared which is gravity in the negative y direction and then we'll apply some boundary conditions so we want to physically lock the cup in place and we also want to pour the beer uh, as the analysis goes on so what we're going to do is fix in every direction except for ur3 which means twisting around the z axis and we're going to allow that to turn by 0.4 radians. Now, because this is an explicit analysis, we do also need to apply a amplitude card. We can't just simply use ramp. And so we're going to say here is at 0 times 0, we're going to have an amplitude of 0. And at time 1, which is halfway through the analysis, we're going to have an amplitude of 1. So the beer will be fully poured at halfway through, and then we'll be able to see the liquid falling down. We select the amplitude and we're ready to go. I think that completes our model. Uh, we might want to go into our field output and ask for a few more fields just so we get a little bit more fidelity there. Um, and then finally, we're going to want to create a job named beer. And will parallelize this analysis to give us a bit more speed because it is quite a significant uh, analysis this one I think it's going to take a few hours and then we'll go ahead and run and wait for the analysis to complete 
Okay, so we've got the model run now. And the first thing I should mention is that we did increase the time of the um, run from two seconds to four seconds. And that's because we realized uh, after we ran it that we didn't have quite enough time for the beer to start coming out of the bottle. Um, so what I'm going to quickly do is change the uh, visualization so that the past part instances are separated. And you can see I've already given the cup a red solo cup kind of look. We've got a green beer bottle and the beer inside is kind of a yellow color. And so if we animate this now, we can see that the, the bottle turns and the beer starts to pour out just like we kind of planned. Uh, if we spin it around like this, we can kind of see how it uh, separates out once it hits the bottom of the cup there. And then we can also do things like we can cut the cup in half and see, you know, the beer pouring out there and ha how it kind of lands. And uh, it's kind of, kind of a cool view. Other things we can do here, if we just pause the analysis uh, visualization real quick, we can look at, um, well, if we do this, we can look at stress. So we can see the, the stress plot uh, of the beer as it's pouring out there. We can also look at things like the velocity of the beer as it's coming out and indeed the velocity as we turn the the bottle. And so um, there we go. We've kind of got our analysis done. We've got we've poured ourselves a beer and we're ready for the game. Uh, so if you guys have any other questions about this, feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, otherwise, we look forward to seeing you in the next Fidelis Fun Features.